Good afternoon to you all. This is a text of a resolution and a press statement that is to be issued after a one-day retreat at the National Assembly, marking the end of the year as we leave the National Assembly to return in a few days' time to continue with our legislative business. The text of this statement is about the dictatorial conduct and poor leadership of His Excellency, Reverend Father Heisen, earlier the Governor of Benue State, and the need for His Excellency, President Ahmed Bola Tinibu GCFR, to call Governor Alia to order. We, the undersigned, are members of the National Assembly Caucus, elected on the platform of APC, Benue State. Having watched with apprehension the absence of democratic leadership in Benue State in the last six months, exemplified by the arrogant and egocentric conduct of Go Governor Heisen earlier, we have decided to draw the attention of Mr. President and other leaders of APC in Nigeria to seek their immediate intervention before the fortunes of APC in Benue State are totally destroyed by the Benue State Governor. It is necessary to state from the onset that we have collectively and individually drawn the attention of the leader of APC in Benue State, Senator Dr. George Yakumen, who is now the Secretary of Government of the Federation, and who has on several occasions pleaded for patience from us in the anticipation of a possible change of attitude from His Excellency Governor Heisen earlier. Rather than change for the better, Governor Alia has become more emboldened and has continued to treat us and the party in general in the most despicable, disgusting, disrespectful, and disingenuous manner. Gentlemen of the press, a background information on the status of APC in Benue State before now could be relevant at this juncture. Benue State APC, under the leadership of Dr. George Akume, as two times former governor of Benue State, three times senator, former minister, and now secretary of government of the Federation, had won elections and taken over power in Benue State in 2015, after APC was formed. Unfortunately, the then governor, Senator Samuel Otom, betrayed the party and defected to the PDP, thus opening the chapter of a temporary setback for APC in Benue State. Not daunted, Benue APC, under Senator Dr. George Akume, undertook a purposeful re-engineering of the Benue political landscape to reclaim her stolen mandate and return the state to the mainstream progressive politics in Nigeria. It is this now stronger APC that attracted Reverend Father Hassan earlier to desperately seek election on the party's platform. In retrospect, Father Alia only came to reap where he did not sow. In any case, you are well aware of the rejection of his candidacy by older members of the party, including litigations in several courts of law up to the Supreme Court of Nigeria. It took the stringent support of Dr. George Akume to extricate his candidacy from the destructive grip of his co-aspirants and eventual victory at the polls. Today, the ungrateful Father Alia, who had barely joined APC two months before the gubernatorial primaries, assumes a messianic posture and tends to appropriate the victory of APC in Benue State as a product of his so-called popularity. Without regard to the painstaking and systematic efforts 
of the existing formidable political structure, which has enthroned all the former governors before him and himself inclusive. The question begging for answer is, why did this self-acclaimed popular priest not contest on the platform of either ABGA, PDP, or other smaller political parties in Benue State to test and affirm his self-acclaimed popularity? For clarity's sake, let us contextualize some of the dictatorial and egocentric tendencies of Governor Hayes and Alia and his poor treatment of Benue APC in the last six months of his administration, including we members of the National Assembly. One, the election of the Speaker of Benue House of Assembly. The position of the Speaker was zoned to the Jemba block of Benue Northwest Senatorial District, also called Zone B. Coincidentally, that is the birthplace of Senator Dr. George Alcumen. Whereas APC has 22 members out of the 32 members of the Assembly, Governor Leah connived with former Governor Gabriel Susan of PDP to produce a speaker different from the candidate preferred by APC. In the contest for the position of the speaker, Governor Leah had midnight meetings at the residence of Senator Gabriel Susan and got 10 PDP members to align with seven recalcitrant APC members to beat the APC preferred candidate by a small margin of two votes. This began his unholy alliance with PDP to undermine and maltreat the legitimate members of APC in Benue State. Two, after the speakership debacle, the party again nominated and made a spread of principal officers of the assembly comprising majority leader, deputy majority leader, chief whip, and deputy chief whip. Surprisingly, the speaker joyfully agreed with the opposition party on all nominations from the PDP, as endorsed by the state chairman of the party and secretary, but jettisoned the list submitted by his own party, the APC, and rather accepted the list that was unilaterally submitted to him by the governor through the governor's chief of staff. Three, it was an embarrassing experience for the party having to face the dejection in the hands of an administration it labeled hard to install. However, the party submitted and sustained their faith in the governor and his government, even when they felt aggrieved and resorted to stand by the advice of the leader of the party, the SGF, whose counsel has always been for the party to pray for Governor Alia to succeed and to change from his undemocratic tendencies. Four, in the first meeting of the stakeholders that was held in government house, the chairman of the party, Comrade Osen Agada, publicly went on his knees and to accept blames even though there were no blames, and apologized to the governor and party members requesting that they put behind the state assembly in Broglio and come together to save the party. In the meeting, the governor hypocritically praised the leader of the party with a promise to always work together so that Benue and the party will enjoy democratic dividends. He also pledged that going forward, he will try to involve the party and other critical stakeholders, including us, members of the National Assembly, in all the central decisions, particularly in the nomination of commissioners and local government category chairmen as we move forward, a promise that is, however, kept in breach. Five, in appointing his commissioners, His Excellency Governor Alia again excised a sole description without recourse to the normal tradition of requesting for nominations from local governments and disregarded the zoning arrangements and permutations and went ahead to make his independent choices as he deemed fit. Again, the party did not oppose him, but rather 
accepted to play along with him in the following hope that Governor Lea will change. Six, why we do not support the dissolution of a democratic elected local government council? Governor Lea again single-handedly and singly and privately appointed all the caretaker chairman in the 23 local government areas of Benue State without recourse to the party, ESCO, nor any other stakeholder in Benue State, to the extent that even members of opposition have been appointed by him in total disregard of zoning and reward for performance in the last election. Surprisingly, when the nominations were forwarded, the governor went on, as I earlier said, and appointed whoever that he chose. Recall that the governor earlier requested the party leadership to nominate three persons per each local government, and that he would appoint from the three nominees from each local government. But the governor again threw away that list and appointed whoever he wanted, in total disregard of what has been the practice in Benue State. Number seven, disregard, disrespect to members of the National Assembly. Governor Hassan Dalia, since assumption of duty, has not had any single meeting with members of the National Assembly who were elected on the same APC platform with him. Neither does he pick or return our telephone calls, not to talk of consulting them on political matters in the state. He has assumed the posture of a conqueror who does not care about the welfare nor the sensibilities of members of the National Assembly. In every other state of the Federation, members of the National Assembly are working in synergy with their governors to attract development from the center to their states of origin. This is not the case in Benue State. Governor Alia is running a one-man show. Eight, Governor Alia has no known development blueprint for Benue State. As at the moment, nobody in Benue State is aware of the direction of his administration. What he practices is personal rule, and this is replicated by the lopsided appointments he has made in the state so far, with his immediate Kunav community cornering all the positions in his government. Nine, the implications of this undemocratic rule in Benue State. The grave consequences of Governor Alia's personal rule is that the generality of APC members who are excluded and abandoned are beginning to lose faith in the APC-led administration in Benue State. Therefore, care must be taken to safeguard APC from this tyrannical leadership of Governor Alia so as to prepare the party for the next round of elections. By Governor Alia's undemocratic attitude, activities, and posture, the fortunes of APC in Benue State are fast declining. The governor hires fake crowd and moves around in the state capital, giving the impression that the people are with him. Whereas, you all know that party politics in Nigeria is predicated on the shoulders of leaders from the world to the state, to the, from the world to the local government to the states. It's not the crowd that you hire in the state capital that gives you the votes. We wish to request Mr. President to intervene before Governor Alia destroys APC in Benue State, and that is the resolution of the National Assembly Caucus, having risen from this one-day retreat. I want to thank all of you for listening. May God bless all of us. Thank you. In conclusion, we wish to pledge our loyalty to the President of Nigeria, President Ahmed Bola Tinibu, the National Chairman of our party, Alhaji Omar Ganduje, the Supreme Senator of the Federal Republic, Senator Dr. George Yakume, and Secretary to the Government of the Federation, and the State Chairman of our party, Comrade Austin Agada, and all the other leaders of the party. Long live Nigeria. Long live Benue State. 
Long live all progressive Congress. Thank you, and may God bless us. Thank you, distinguished senator. We will take uh, questions from the members of the media. But before then, I've been informed that one few members of this caucus will also add one or two things to the resolution being read by distinguished senator. Thank you very much. Uh, we want to thank all of you for attending this one-day retreat. You have listened to the leader of the CACOS. Uh, we are here to support him and to endorse uh, the statement that he has presented. And in doing that, I would like to expand on some of the issues raised in that address. First and foremost, I want to touch on the issue of nepotism. Uh, my name is Philip Agbese. I represent the good people of Fado Popo of Badibu Federal Constituency. I'm from the marginalized section of Benue State, the Doma speaking part of Benue State. It is very, very true that in time past, we have cried of marginalization that the Doma people have not been given the rightful position in the affairs of Benue State, but in the history of the state, we have not had it this bad under the current leadership of Father Hassan Alia. It is on this note, I want to say it is a crying shame that Benue State has become the personal property of one man who allocates government positions to his family members and friends, a man whose calling as a priest is to preach unity, fairness, and equity. Governor Hassan Alia has instead of uniting the state and making it an example as a man of God that he should be and expected to be has elevated nepotism and hatred against the dumbass speaking people of Benue State to statecraft and make corruption an instrument to be glorified. It will interest you to know that Governor Alias, since assumption of office on May 29, 2003, has embarked on skewed appointments as majority of the key appointments have gone to his clan state constituency, a part of Vadekia local government where Father Alia comes from. It is even believed in Vadekia local government area where Father Alia comes from that he is marginalizing the majority of that local government. Let me, for the purpose of emphasis, read out the following appointment which Father Alia has made in his constituency, in his care state constituency within Vandekia local government area. Number one, Abba Emmanuel Tile, Auditor General of the State. Dennis Akura, Special Advisor, Bureau on Local Government and Chief Council Affairs. Emmanuel Agema, Acting Chairman, Board of Internal Revenue from his care constituency. Grace Adagba, Chairman, Benue State Universal Basic Education Board, Subeb, from his care constituency in Vandekia Local Government. Raymond Asemaka, MD, Benue Investment and Property Company Limited, BIPC, from his care constituency. Emmanuel Kenge, Private, private, principal private secretary from his care constituency, James Yopu, executive secretary, state emergency management agency from his care constituency, Stephen Numeve, state project coordinator, rural assets and cultural marketing project from his care constituency, Tenengo Mende, acting GM, urban development board from his care constituency, <laughs> Professor Gabriel Akpe. Mm -hmm. DG, Bureau of Special Projects and Infrastructure, from his care constituency in Vadekia local government. Leonard Ajelo Vyashima, head of Benue State International Cooperation and Development Coordinating Unit, from his care constituency. Jonathan Giuse, Special Advisor, Poverty Elevation, from his care state constituency. Isaac Akanga, Special Advisor, Local Government Market Coordination from his Kia State Constituency <laughs> in Vadekia Local Government. Tenve Aginde, Special Advisor, Politics and Community Engagement from his Kia State Constituency. Joseph Ha, Special Advisor on Eternal Security from his Kia 
state constituency, uh, uh, Ma Fate Kaha, S. Tofi, senior special assistant on culture from his care constituency, Gwaza Ujamatu, SSA, Bureau Local Government and Chief Council Affairs from his care state constituency, Julius Agbata, state chairman, National Union of Road Transport uh, Workers, appointed by the governor, first time in the history of Bene State for a governor to even be appointing the head of the Agboros, all from his care constituency. <laughs> now, this he has taken to only care constituency. Tell me, distinguished and fellow Nigerians, what is therefore left for the people of Zosi, the Doma speaking side, where I come from? The glaring nepotism in the appointment has attracted widespread condemnation from all segments of the state who have seen the development as a slap on democracy. But that has not bothered the governor in any way. Before Governor Alia came into office, there was a long-standing tradition of carrying all stakeholders, including the State Working Committee of the political party in power and party elders in the process of selecting people to be part of the government, either as cabinet members or as other political office holder. Governor, Governor Alia has seen as rubbish that process which has always made things easy and acceptable to the people in the democracy. Though he's a reverend father, we wonder why a man who had no political platform to pursue his ambition now has total disregard for the party that gave him the space and grant to launch his political career. He's now operating a one-man show without carrying even the cabinet members that he has appointed into office. Today, as we speak, Christmas is four days away from here. Even members of his cabinet are hungry. It is indeed sad that the governor earlier disregard for the party leadership calls with total disdain and insult as he openly claimed that he practically helped the APC to power in Benin State. <coughs> It may also interest you the level of financial mafias going on in the administration of Governor Alia. Many of you have seen, you have read on the pages of newspaper, even recently Sarah reporters, how much Governor Alia, a man of God, has spent on his personal vehicles. Nobody from the state to this moment has disproved that. If, not, if this level of corruption or that for the Alia is not checked, this can crumble the economy of Benin State in the near futures. As lawmakers, we are aware that huge sums of money have been accrued to Benin State in form of federal allocations, palliatives, and other interventions from the Tinibu administration since Governor Alia assumed power. But his lack of respect for due process, transparency, and accountability is again a blow on the state resources. Sadly, Governor Alia has not told anyone what has accrued to the state in the past six months and how he has expended the funds. He has remained silent on what the state wage bill is and has also dodged any inquiry into the state's internally generated revenue. Benway allocation has tremendously increased, but there is nothing to show for it. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, in the middle of all this, the governor has been immersed in reckless spending and contract inflation. Even the prices of the refurbished buses which he claimed to buy at over 3.5 billion naira as part of the money given to Benin State, following the removal of fuel subsidy as palliatives, were clearly inflated. We challenge him to come out clearly and disprove us. To give credence to that, he refused to tell the people how much each of the refurbished buses cost. Even the other items that were said to be given to the state by the federal government for distribution to, vulnerable, to the vulnerable to cushion the effect of fuel subsidy removal are suspected to have been divided by his cronies. Governor Alia also approved a whooping three billion naira for the purchase of vehicles for himself and his cabinet members in an administration that rode to power on what we can boldly describe, to, that rode to power with a promise to cut the cost of governance. The man has spent a mind-blowing 40 billion naira from sources on what we can boldly describe as frivolities without due process. The reckless mismanagement of funds meant for local government is another chapter that is worrisome and characteristic of Governor Alia. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, at this point, I hereby wish to hand over the microphone to Honorable Achema Achado. Thank you very much, my honorable colleagues, gentlemen of the press, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. I want to align myself 
with all that has been said by our caucus leader, Senator Dr. Taito Zam, and my brother, Honorable Agbese. I only need to add that Father Lea has taken decisions without consulting us. I want to confirm that. And some of the decisions he has taken are giving very, very bad name to our party, the APC. One of them is a dissolution of local government councils, elected local government councils. Yes, I am of the APC. The local government councils are PDP members. However, in governance, it is not just about party in all things we do. You need to do what is right. If the chairman had done anything wrong, what the governor is supposed to do is to prosecute them. Why are they not prosecuted? And in all our local governments, there is no project by any local government. Why local government councils in Benin State get an average of 150 million to 300 million monthly? I challenge the governor or anybody working for the governor to show me one project done by any local government in Benin State. There is no project. But we have a man of God who is the governor. Then is it not better to have a devil to be governor? <laughs> so there are also interventions by the president and earlier subscribes to himself for all these monies that the president has given without crediting the president to have given these monies. So we are totally in support of all that has been read here and we are in line with what the caucus chairman and uh, Dr. Besson. The other thing I need to add is that we in Gwe local government were worse off. In Gwe local government, there is no single appointment that Father Lea has made. Not even a special advisor. Where I come from, we don't have a special advisor. We don't have a commissioner. But we had the fifth largest vote for APC, for President Tinibu in the last election in Benue State. We came fifth, but we have nothing. I fear grieves. Thank you. Distinguished ladies uh, and gentlemen, members of the press, my name is Honorable Tese Obo. I represent Kwando Shongo Federal Constituency of Benue State. Well, I just want to align myself with the views of our caucus leaders here and my distinguished and honorable colleagues on the sad situation that we found ourselves in Benue State. And I'll just give a uh, a little background. When we got elected into the House of Reps and the Senate, Mr. President, President Ahmed Bola Ahmed Tinubu invited the members of the National Assembly to a meeting in the presidency where we discussed areas of mutual cooperation and areas of harmony on how the National Assembly and the presidency could work harmoniously to bring development to Nigeria. Not just that, the president invited the entire National Assembly, including members of the PDP, to a meeting in the presidency where he spoke to us and created a harmony and sense of belonging for every member of the National Assembly. And this is what has transpired in the smooth running relationship between the executive arm of government and the legislature in Nigeria today. Mr. President also invited traditional rulers, captains of industry, and other aspects and other sectors of the Nigeria economy and social strata to discuss on the way forward. Unfortunately, in Benue State, since we were elected into power, the members of the National Assembly has not had the opportunity to have a forum with the governor to discuss areas of mutual benefits and areas of development on how members of the National Assembly can support Benue State and support his government to bring the much needed dividend of democracy to Benue State. It is unfortunate that personally I have tried several times to attract investments to Benue State, but unfortunately I have not had access to the governor, except on very rare occasions where he may, at his own wish, pick up, uh, pick up calls from members of the National Assembly. And usually we are asked to liaise with some of his aides to have access to him. 
That means as members of the National Assembly, we don't have direct access to our governor. And many of us have been unable to partner with him to be bringing some of the dividends of democracy that our people urgently need. And I feel that as a representative of my people of Kwando Ushongo, if I cannot access the governor, then automatically my people in my constituency have been cut off from accessing the governor, because I'm a representative of the people. So I should have direct access to the governor to discuss issues of both national importance as they affect our country, Nigeria, and to discuss issues that concern my people of Kwando Ushongo. But this has been completely lacking in Benue State so far. And that is why you see the continuous outcry by both stakeholders, elders, party uh, chieftains, women, youths, cut across the entire Benue State. It has become a case of divide and rule in Benue State. And this is quite unfortunate. We are very sad about this. This is not how we, we expected it to be. This is not what we envisaged when we all campaigned and shouted, yes, father, and the, during the campaign trail. And today, it is difficult for us to even shout the yes, father, that we all so gloriously uh, screamed during the campaign season. So, distinguished ladies and gentlemen of the press, uh, I just want to encourage us to take these issues very seriously, and we hope that the presidency and the, our party will look into the issue of Benue State so that our people, at this auspicious time in Nigeria, would benefit from the government of APC at the federal level, at the state level, and even at the local government level. Thank you very much. Thank you, yes. distinguished senators and honorable members of the National Assembly. We will now take questions from the members of the press. I will urge my colleagues, members of the press, to be brief. First, you introduce yourself, where you are from, when I say where you're from, the paper or the TV station you represent, and your name, please. Let's be brief. We'll start with channels. Um, distinguished senators, um, honorable members, um, I'm Gilly Omoyen, and I report for Channels Television. Um, you raised a number of issues, but I'll just take um, three of them. Um, I didn't hear much about um, how much of effort you've made to contact the governor um, in terms of speaking to him or reaching out to him. What efforts have you made so far? Uh, secondly, um, is there a semblance of what is happening in River State, in Benue State today? Um, what I mean River State, I mean is Reverend Father Alia, who you say came to governance on the support of the current SGF. Are they a past now? Are they fighting or is there you know a quarter relationship between them and then finally um, the last paragraph of your speech you talked about the fact that um, the generality of people of the states are losing faith in your party and then you made a statement therefore care must be taken to safeguard the apc from subsequent electoral victories in the future what does that statement mean are you saying that um, the party should not fuel the governor in the next governorship elections in the states or what exactly do you, do you mean by this statement thank you very much can we take one more, one or two more? Okay. Yeah. Let's take two more questions. Okay, two more questions. Two more. We'll take uh, News Agency of Nigeria. Okay. Good afternoon, everybody. I just have one question. My name is Femi Yugushala. Please, Honorable and uh, Senator, please, I would like to know why the Godfather that is the leader of the party, is always having issues with his gospel. Like coming from former governor, uh, Susan, and the immediate past governor. They have always had this agreement. Why must he be a current issue? Listen to me. Mr. Ayofe. Kaede Akintola is my name. I work for Nigerian Chibu. So I have to, uh, just a few questions to ask. Um, yes, yes. Mm. The senator and honorable members. The first question is um, mm. you allege that this um, incumbent governor, you know, joined the party barely two months and you adopted him. Sir, in fairness and in the spirit of equity, have you not shown bad blood? 
have you not felt bad blood within the same party that other members have contributed and built over the years? For you to adopt somebody less than two months or about two months to be governor. Is that internal democracy? Is it working in APC or Benue State? That's number one. Number two, you are calling on Mr. President to order, call the man who is the governor now to order. You said uh, the, the, the man is dictatorial and what have you. Are these uh, terms, are they, are they democratic? Do you want uh, Mr. President to declare state of emergency on Benue State or why calling him to ask the man that was voted by the people of Benue State to order? Number three, let me ask, all the statements you've made from distinguished senator to honorable members, I really find, and I just are worried about it, that there was no mention of critical infrastructure being put in place, except for the last um, speaker. No. How the state will develop, how employment will be generated. But we only heard <laughs> of, sir? No, 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 no. Let me ask you. We only heard of infighting antagonistic uh, rivalry between the godfathers and the well to do in the society, not talking about the citizens, the, the poor people who are suffering and needed the intervention of all of you. So this infighting, is it to the benefit of the people with all that you said? Thank you. Okay. Okay. Yes. Please. We'll take female, we'll take female after his response, please. Sorry. Yes, I will uh, attempt some uh, responses to the posers made, and then my colleagues will also handle others. Should we leave, should I leave behind any issue? Let me start with the, with the, with, with, with the question about Godfather, Godson crisis in Benway. I did not, in any part of my first statement, imply or state that there is a problem between the state to the federal government and the governor of Benue State. Rather, I say he has been pleading with us as stakeholders who are not carried along to be patient with the governor. Read my, my, my statement again. I did not, neither did anyone here say Governor Lea and uh, Senator Dr. George Akume have issues. Nobody said so. Rather, we say the LGF is pleading that we should give Fadalia more time. But the more we wait, the more emboldened the governor has become to do the wrong thing. So I think that question you asked does not fall in line with what we have said and written down and read out here. So somebody asked, what efforts have we made to get to the governor to iron out things? Even that, we say the man does not even take our telephone calls. He has never for once invited us. And this statement has been adumbrated eloquently by the two weeks ago, when he said, unlike the presidency, when Tinubu on assumption of duty called us, and I bear testimony to that, President Tinubu invited all members of the National Assembly to a sit down in the villa where we all resolved to work together. That has not been replicated in Benue State. And that's why we are saying the man does not have any iota of respect on members of the National Assembly. And then somebody asks, are we calling for are we calling for state of emergency? We say Mr. President should intervene before this man destroys APC. President Tinubu is not just the executive head of this country, he is also the head of the party. And so if there are issues, political issues in the state, being the president of this country and leader of the party, he has a role to play. And that's the reason why we even drew his attention to it, by saying he should come out and call Governor Alia to order. Calling somebody to order does not amount to a declaration of state of emergency. Does it? It does not. Then, uh, no, 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 no mention was made of uh, development. I really don't know. 
We have even said the man does not have a developmental agenda. If he has any, we would know. And we say the man is ruling the state as it pleases him. As members of the National Assembly all over the country, we are supposed to be major stakeholders in the running of Benue State, in the running of our state. We should be able to know that this is the program, this is what the man wants to do. There is no such uh, the Roman blueprint on the table. So what do we do? We even mention it here. So, gentlemen, I think what we have said here explains exactly the state of affairs at home. But I think my friend... Uh, okay. Somebody else wants to say something. I want to just respond to an issue of development which you mentioned. I said in my local government, my local government of Way East, the average allocation where is local government gets is 200 million naira a month. There is no boho dog by this present administration. I'm talking about boho. No boho. No covet. If there is any covet that is being done by this local government administration in where local government, I will tell my resignation from the National Assembly. There is virtually nothing. With all the money that is received by my local government. The money is taken away and is unacceptable. It's unacceptable. Thank you very much. Uh, distinguished leader, I want to respond to the question asked by the person who mentioned River State if what is going on in River State looks like what is going on in Benway State. And I want to be emphatically clear about that. It looks very, very similar. But I can tell you that whatever is going on in River State between Simi Fubara and Wike uh, will be compared to a, a case of sainthood and evil. Whatever is going on, I want to consider that Simi Fubara is a saint. It is saying that to some large extent he was part of the system. You people have mentioned it here. And today, as a carcass, we have agreed because it was stated clearly and established here in the National Assembly that if you say the truth, you will die. If you don't say the truth, you will still die. So we will say the truth today for Nigerians to hear and so that we will die peacefully. <laughs> now, before Aya constituted his state executive council, he gave the impression of a man that was in a hurry to develop the state. Quickly, he went into the award of contract, even without due process, when there was no state executive council. We thought it was the action of a man that was in a hurry to develop the state. But in a period of 100 years into his administration, he was not able to address the people of Benue State because after all the award and the money taken from the covers of the state, there was no single thing on ground to point us to what Alia has done for the state. We challenge him. We are facts and figures, and we are using this opportunity to challenge him to also open the books for Nigerians and the Benue people to see. And you see clearly that the state is in a total state of collapse, and our finances are being frittered away. Today, if you go to Gusape, you go to Metama, houses have been bought by people before May 29 who have no bank account. They are part and parcel of the system today in Benue State. We know that we know where these houses are. Tomorrow, we can take you press people to these houses. Let Nigerians know the owners of these houses and how they came about this word. I'll stop here for now. Okay. Thank you uh, very much, ladies and gentlemen. Mine is a rider to the answer provided by the young man who asks about whether these are press conferences about the people and then uh, development. I, I represent Makodi Guma Federal Constituency in Benue State. I'm sure most of you are aware that uh, Makoti Goma is the epicenter of banditry and uh, Fulani headsman crisis. 80% of our people are in IDPs. Makoti Goma, way, way west, where my senator come from, and uh, Lugu Kwandi, uh, where my senator represents, Senator Dendi represent. The basis for which these people voted for Fadalia was his promise that after his election that they would go home. As I speak to you, most of these people 
are, are still in IDPs. Fadalia has never responded to my call when security issues occur, when killings by headsmen occur in my area. No single phone call. We made efforts to speak to him as a caucus at a day after his inauguration. He said he will do that the following week. It's been six months. We represent our people. We speak to them. We know their challenges. The only way the governor we know what is happening first. For instance, in my council ward, is when he speaks to me. Because I speak to my people directly. I provide for them. That is why I was able to convince them to vote for him. He doesn't know anybody from my local government. And earlier won my local government in Kuma. When we had a sitting governor from my local government, he won that local government. So to suggest that he somehow, it's popularity that gave him votes, it's, it's a lie. In my own election, I couldn't even go home. My election and President Tinubu's election, I couldn't go home for my election. It was his election that I had to go home and convince my people to vote for him. Benue is today run like a parish. Of course, we have a Reverend Father. But Benue is different. Benue is not a parish. It's not supposed to be run like a parish. The man came and increased his personal approval from 100 million from the, pres uh, the other governor, 50 million, to 250 million. For three months, he didn't have commissioners. He was making approvals, dividing them, and awarding contracts. There is nothing to show for in Benue State in terms of infrastructure. The only benefits of democracy we have seen in the past six months is palliatives that the federal government under President Tinibu has given. You go to Benue, you see Benue links buses. Those are even old buses that the governor used the money of palliatives to buy. It's not from Benue covers. He said he has frozen the account of Benue State for the past six months because the former government issued the check. That's laughable. Most of you know how approvals and checks works in a government uh, system. Nobody can go and present a check without confirmation from the issuing authority. See, today as I speak to you, all the commissioners, all the ministries don't have overhead. You can find out from his appointees. There's no overhead. When he needs something, he calls the bank manager to open the account for a few hours. He takes out money and then he frees the account again. That's what is happening in Benue State. That's how we run parish, parishes. That is not governance. Do you understand? This is what is happening. There is no development anywhere in Benue. Nowhere. So tell me. We are here today on behalf of our people because we convinced them to vote for APC. For APC. That's why they voted. I speak as a coordinator of Mr. President during the primaries. Benue delivered, Mr. President, during the primaries, 96%. I was coordinating Benue State during the, that time. And I know that people of Benue love APC. But what they have got in terms of governor is a terrible situation. Every APC person that voted earlier is regretting in Benue State today. I must tell you that. Is that bad? The security agencies led by Operation Wire who are posted in our villages, to protect, to provide security for our people, don't have interventions, don't have time. The governor doesn't listen to any one of them, even when they go to see him. If you go to see my governor, you will wait for three, four hours. And what they will say, he is praying. Okay? That's what's happening in Benue today. You can find out for yourselves. Is that bad? Okay? We want to appreciate you people for taking time to listen to us. We will continue to say this. We are appealing to the president of our country to intervene in Benue State. Today, there is no governance going on in Benue. And our national chairman, His Excellency Governor Ganduji, needs to step up. APC is fast losing ground in Benue because of the bad, bad governance going. Lastly, the chairman of my local government, the caretaker chairman of my local government is a PDP person who worked against us during the elections. PDP member, PDP member who worked against us during the election is now the caretaker chairman in my local government. I was not consulted at all as a member of the House of Reps representing that local government. That's what's going on in Bimi. Thank you very much. Thank you. This, 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 this,
have been accused of not being gender sensitive. Permit me to take the last three questions from the female. Elizabeth. Uh, good afternoon, uh, lawmakers. Good afternoon, yeah, uh, So, uh, I want to hear uh, from our lawmakers, our Bernal lawmakers. Yeah, first of all, my name is Lizzie GP. I write other paper. So, I would like our lawmakers to tell us if this retreat was organized at the instance of the SGF. Uh -huh. And secondly, secondly uh, it is fast becoming a norm in Benue State that the ruling party fights against itself. Because in the last dispensation, which was governed by uh, uh, what is uh, Autumn, we had the same scenario where Otom was fighting with party members. And this time around again, we are having the same challenge. So my question is, is there no internal mechanism put in place to resolve these issues where you have the Ochi Idoma and the Toti to be able to call everyone to order? And then secondly, are you accusing, thirdly, are you accusing Alia of interpart? Thank you very much. For the second time, for the second time, my dear sister, you were here when I responded to the poser as to whether the fight is between a godson and a godfather. What did I say? I said, it's not about godfather and godson. At our level as members of the National Assembly, hello, you're not listening. You are, are we not qualified to be giving attention without recourse to the SGF? Did we say the SGF asked us to conduct any retreat? As senators, as House of Rep members in every state of this country, are we not supposed to be carried along in the running of affairs in our states? We are telling you that the SGF, as the leader of the party in the state, has pleaded that we should be patient. But we lost our patience after waiting for six months. And we are giving you indices of what misgovernance Governalia is perpetrating in Benue State. So why do you always try to bring in the SGF? I think that question has been over, overblown and is needless. Then you say we should involve Toji and Uchi Doma. When these uh, revered rulers are asked to be apolitical, I don't think this is the time to tell. We have a duty as elected representatives. We came on the same ballot paper with Governor Alia. If he's not ruling us a right, we have a right to complain. And the president of this country is also a politician. So we are talking to him as the leader of the party in this country. We are federal lawmakers. We are not state assembly members. Our immediate leadership here is the president of this country. And that is our own channel of communication. Thank you. Thank you very much. I want to use this opportunity to appreciate Mr. President for what he has done in my federal constituency. Uh, one and a half months ago, we attended um, a church service in Daudu. Uh, Daudu uh, is part of my federal constituency. The road from Daudu to Umengi, Bajimba, and then Nasara State in Kiana. The two bridges have been bad for the past six years. One of my elders invited the governor to a Thanksgiving service. And we raised the issue of those trip, uh, two bridges. The governor called on his commissioner for health and one of his PSAs that they should fix that bridge. These are bridges that cost over 50 to 30 million. 30 to 50 million. He said that those bridges will be fixed in two weeks. Till today, nobody has gone to that bridge. But I want to thank the president. And I want my people of Makodi Guma to appreciate Mr. President 
for Tony Daudu Bajimba uh, backing quota into a federal road in this budget. Daudu Udam Omenge backing quota is a federal road now and there's a full allocation for the construction of that road and those bridges. Thank you very much. Thank you. I think with that, uh, we have come to the end of this briefing. Let me, on behalf of this great caucus, thank members of the press and other important guests that are here for their cooperation and their support. We thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.